This is part one of Chess Secrets from the Chess History. The inspiration I got from this book, which is called Historical Secrets. In the same way as scientists and researchers found gold and treasures with the help of our world history, I will do the same, but with the chess history. I will start with this book, New York 1927 by Alexander Alekine. So, what did I find in this book? I found a game between Aljechin Spielmann, and it's a kind of model game, how to play the London systems. And it seems to me that it's a forgotten line. So, what is the London system? Alekine started by opening with a knight, and black answered in the classical manner with d5. White did the same. And now Spielmann blocked his own bishop on c8. More flexible is knight f6. And here we have the main position for the London system. We can also play long on f3 e6. The only difference is that we got some information about how black wants to play with his bishop on c8. So, what's the idea with the London system? The idea is to control the diagonal h2 to b8. And what happens if black does the same? If you oppose the bishop, white gladly, gladly wants to exchange them because he will benefit from the pawn structure. Well, okay, black can play this now, but say that white play like this, and later like this, white will have the better bishop, because he has two white pawns on black squares in the center, but white has two pawns on white squares. So this bishop is the bad one, and this is the good one, according to classical chess terminology. So the exchange is in white interest. The most active plan for black is to try to exploit the weakness, weakness which is created now on b2, and that is by playing c5 and attacking white's center. And it's also very logical to attack white's center because white didn't do it with c4. White defends d4 with e3 and at the same time opens for his own bishop and black immediately attacks the weak point in white's camp. So now Alekhine has to decide how to defend the pawn, or maybe he should even sacrifice it. In the game, Alekhine chose to defend the pawn with a passive queen move, but Alekhine mentions this variation, and if white now takes on b2, White will play knight b5, is defended by the bishop on f1. White tries to play knight c7 check, so black has to defend knight a6. And now rook b1, black has to take on a2. Now the a file is open, so white can immediately exploit it with rook takes a6, followed by the fork on c7 with a one gain. So this is a very bad variation for black. Another variation Aliakwen mentions is c5, c4. But the disadvantage with that move is that black loses pressure on the white center. And now white can put pressure on black center with e4. If black takes here now, because white can't play knight b5, white has this quiet move with the threat root b1, for instance, and knight b5 with a double threat on a3 and c7. The queen can't go to a5 because of the bishop, and if it goes here, 
he would have problems with his kingside development. Also, it's possible for White to play bishop b4 and exchange the bishop on f8. So, what happens if Black choose not to play c4 or queen takes b2? Aliyachin says that White can play sixth rook b1. For instance, if Black plays knight f6, this is a plausible move. Strangely enough, I didn't find it in the theoretical works I looked at, and that was the Encyclopedia, the Yugoslavian one, and also the Informators. I only saw Kovacevic's a3. You can't take on b2 now because the queen is trapped up to knight a4. And also this move has been played, knight b5, which forces knight a6. So I think this is a fully playable move. I looked at this variation to open the bishop diagonal and try to put the knight on e4 immediately. But it seems to be harmless after castles on the king's wing. Of course now f5 is the best move, but if black takes twice on c3, this will happen. Now white wins a piece with rook b3. So this is a very bad variation for black. So rook b1 seems to be fully playable, even tactically. Now we will look at the game where Alekhan choose to play queen c1. This is a very solid move, and probably the best one. Spearman continued with knight c6, puts more pressure on d4, and white pies c3. So here we have the famous triangle. And this is a very common pawn structure in the London system. White is very strong and solid in the center, but not so active. Black has actually a more active pawn position. This one is more active than that one, for instance. Spielmann continues with bishop d7. He wants to put the rook on c8 and embarrass the queen a little bit because of the x-ray. Now white has to make a very important decision where to put his bishop on e2 or d3. So I suggest you push the button and think a few minutes about this. I will now tell you the solution that Alekhain chose to play bishop e2. And he analyzes and motivates the reason he didn't play bishop d3 with knight f6 with a positional threat of knight h1, forces h3. This is a very common standard move in the London system. You need the square h2 if black threats the bishop. So always keep the London bishop, it's very important. Otherwise the system loses its meaning. Group c8, castles. Black opens the c-line c5, and now because the pawn on c3 is pinned black in place, like this. And now black has a very strong exchange maneuver, so he forces an exchange of the white square bishops, and this is in black's interest. One variation is and black is fine. He, he managed to solve his only problem in his position, so now he can just catch up the development in two moves. So this is of course fully playable for white, but uh, we expect uh, something better with this variation, of course. So we will look at the move and kind play, bishop e2 instead. It is probably the best move. Uh, 
that's female plate 9 F6, and right also with the obligatory move H3. Now, Blank did not play the most accurate move. He played C takes D4. I, I kind of not mention an alternative. He just says in his annotations that Black probably has to take on d4 in the long run anyway, because White is planning this kind of structure. It doesn't mention any moves for Black, but the plausible moves are normal development. And now I can continue with d takes c5. Bishop takes c5, e4. The immediate threat is e5, and the pawn on a7 is hanging. And if black takes an e4, he will have a pawn majority, three pawns versus two. Black has four pawns versus three, but it's very difficult to advance them because of the king's placement. White also has a very strong central position. Black has to take an e4. White has the initiative here. He, he can have some temples on the queen's wing and has also a threat on h7. But still, it's playable for black. <clears throat> So, we will go back to the position where the exchange took place, instead of bishop e7. Here we have the position c takes e4, and of course we take back with a e pawn. And now Spielman played the natural group bishop e7. Both castle here. And knight bd2, rook a, c8. And now we have the typical move for this variation. Sorry, the bishop is on e2, which is queen b1. The idea with this variation, because white controls this diagonal, but the next step in the London system is to control your own B8, B1, A7 diagonal. So white plans to play bishop D3 here. White tries to prevent it with knight A5, and now I suggest you push the bottom. What is white's best move? The move Alekhine made, he put an exclamation mark on. He played rook e1. And the idea is, of course, to prevent the exchange maneuver, which we mentioned before. Now he can play bishop d1, followed by bishop c2 with some initiative. So if you suggest a bishop d3, you are on the wrong track because then black just continues bishop b5. This move prevents um, a4, but still you will have some weaknesses on the queen's wing. So of course it's much better to do a useful move because the rook is very good on the half open e5. Spearman continues with normal development, rook f d8. And now knight e5, bishop e8. Now we have a kind of ideal position if you play the London system. White's next move is to play bishop e5. But it's also good for black to play a6 here. Uh, this kind of structure is very dangerous for black, according to Alekhine. Black cannot avoid a weakening pawn move on the king's wing. 
but he must do the right one. And the right one is to play g6, exclamation mark. It's the strongest move, definitely. It will weaken the squares on h6 and f6, but black can defend with g7 and knight g8. This is the main idea with g6. Now I want you to think at least five minutes, but if you can think 10 or maybe even 15 minutes on this position, it is even better because you have to make a very important decision how to continue in the most efficient manner. So I suggest you push the bottom now. Alikain did not play the best move here. He played a very natural move, bishop g5. He tries to exploit those squares, but as speed on shown in this game, it's not uh, effective. Black just answered king g7. And if white now continues with knight g4, black can just play knight g8 and defend all the critical squares, a6, f6, and e7. So white's attack will just vanish. In the game, Alekhine played queen c1, and black has to be a little bit careful here. If it's white move, he would play knight g4, and if black moves back, white changes bishops. Now it's very weak here, f6, a6. White can exploit it immediately here. Can you see that line? I give you a few minutes. I hope you push the bottom, because now I will tell you the correct solution, which is knight c4. If black takes the knight, the long arm with the queen is queen a6 check. And now you can't stop the mate on h7. But it's easy to defend from all this. If black just plays immediately knight g8, he has no problems, and this is what Spielman did. Add a kind to knight 7 And for instance, if he plays now knight g4 with the threat we mentioned before, knight c4, black will just go back. And now he covers the squares. In the game, Alekhine played knight df3, and eventually they agreed to draw the game. Now we will look at the best coordination. If you found this move, you are a genius, because then you have deep knowledge about this kind of structure. The best move is b4, according to Alikai. But I agree with him completely. It doesn't matter that the pawn c3 will be weak, because black can't exploit it. Only weaknesses you can exploit are weak, according to modern uh, chess thought. Knight c6, and here white has different options, all of them very good. White can play a4 to take space on the queen's wing. And if black takes an e5, white takes back with a pawn, and then you follow up with bishop e3 and bishop d4, and you will have a very strong bishop on the central square. White can also play knight b3, the idea to put the knight on c5. And also the quiet move, bishop e3, which would press f4. If you didn't find b4, it's also good if you found this move, which prepares b4. It's also fully playable. So b4 and bishop e3 was the best move in this position. And this um, attack is too superficial to succeed. And he actually played as superficial as Marshall did against Nimsevich in the same tournament when he played a 
queen to e2 with the idea, bishop a6. So even Alicant can have his bad days sometimes. So th th this is what I found in this book, New York, 1927, by Alexander Alekine. I wish you good luck with this system. <laughs>